taxes. We've talked about corporations, big corporations, finding ways to pay absolutely no taxes. And USA Today has an article uh, that says, yes, there's been a lot of talk about Apple finding ways to drastically cut its federal tax bill. But if you actually look at the S&P 500, which is which is made up of 500 of the biggest companies in the United States, there are actually many companies that pay zero effective tax rate. In fact, 57 of the S&P 500 pay zero effective tax rates, according to S&P Capital IQ. Uh, the effective tax rate for a corporation, to be clear that we're talking about the same thing, is the average rate at which pre-tax profits are taxed. And for corporations, the effective tax rate is, is computed by dividing total tax expenses by earnings before taxes. OK, now this news is coming out just a couple of months after the Government Accountability Office released a report which said that in back in 2010, companies paid an effective tax rate of 12.6 percent. So when you look at the rate, the federal corporate tax rate is 35 percent. The effective tax rate is 12.6 percent. And this, of course, Lewis, is the result of I don't know if I want to call it creative accounting or if we want to call it the result of the type of accounting you only have access to if you have a lot of money, call it what you will. It's the result of taking advantage of very specific tax laws that are uh, available for big corporations. Listen to some of the names of the companies, Lewis, that are paying zero effective tax rate. Verizon, drug maker Bristol Myers Squibb, power management firm Eaton. The uh, the list is incredibly long. It actually spans onto a second page altogether. MetLife, Avalon Bay Communities, Lamb Research, uh, 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 Pulte Group, Plum Creek Timber, Perkin Elmer. These are really big companies and they're paying zero effective tax rate on millions, hundreds of millions or even billions of dollars in profit. How are they doing this? There's a couple of ways. Offshore transfer payments, harvesting losses, accounting rules that allow for moving around when your losses are actually taken as tax deductible. So, for example, you can lose money years ago and then take part of those losses and use them to offset future profits, even in very profitable years. And you can manage this with with I don't know if creative accounting is the right way, but with with expert accountants, you can manage this in a way within the law. This is not illegal to offset future earnings with previous losses in a way that is net advantageous. Lewis, we talk all the time about this. Some people will say, well, these are the corporations that are creating jobs. This is the engine of America. We just talked yesterday about how McDonald's, a hugely profitable corporation, pays wages that are so low that they recommend to their employees that they get food stamps and Medicaid. So it is not true that these are totally self-sufficient companies and employees can simply go elsewhere. The employees go to the government while working for these companies in the case of low wage uh, 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 employers. So the idea that they deserve all of these benefits is just not true. Yeah, and it's incredible. There are even some laws that allow for companies to basically just give out lots of stock to I don't know, various executives. Right. Uh, and in that way, uh, take that off of what their taxes would be as well. Just awarding those who are already making so much money. It, it's it's truly incredible what all these corporations have forced politicians to do over the years. 